Good afternoon. Welcome to Posturite's first public seminar. Thank you for joining us today. I'm pleased to be able to say that um, John Ridd um, will be speaking to us today about ever being caught in a mouse trap. So he'll be speaking today about all things mouse related. During this presentation, we will be running a poll. Please vote if you can. Please note though, if you are watching on a tablet, you may not be able to vote. If you do have any questions for John during the session, please use the question panel in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and we'll try to answer your questions at the end of the session. So without further delay, I think it's now time to pass over to John Ridd, who is a fellow of the Institute of the Ergonomics and Human Factors and he also runs his own consultancy, JRP Ergonomics. So John, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Catherine, and uh, if I can add my thanks to all of you who tuned in to support us in this new venture. Um, so to today's topic, uh, what do I mean when talking about the mouse trap? Well, it's a trap that I believe most of us fall into when working with a computer. And it's something that to be, is to be expected, I think. It's, it's really human nature. We go to work to get on with the job, and we don't want to have to worry about thinking about the equipment that we're going to use. The trap that I'm talking about is the basic mouse that is normally supplied for us. It comes as a standard accessory to our computer, the one that we've been given, and we rarely give it much further thought. I think for many of us, and indeed probably the majority of workers, the standard mouse is a perfectly acceptable device. However, many people, as a consequence of the work that they do, or simply because of where we want to use the mouse. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the, the uh, next slide up. Certainly, um, because of where we want to use the, the computer can cause us a lot of problems. Most people may find that uh, after using the mouse or touchpad for most of the day, their, their hand or their arm or shoulder or perhaps all three uh, will be aching or perhaps even worse. Now to belabor the question in this webinar title just a little more, if we bother to think about the cause of our discomfort at all, we probably don't think of it as something that we could have avoided. Like the mouse that could have avoided the mouse trap. We just put it down to a hard day's work or perhaps to our age or to the weather. It's just easier frankly to eat the cheese that's put in front of us. The truth is that we probably could have avoided that discomfort. I would, I would accept that circumstances in which the mouse is used and where we want to use it are critical factors that we are not always in control of. But maybe we should be looking at which of the available devices best serves our work and personal needs, rather than, as I think we do now, just accepting the one-size-fits-all approach. Now, as I understand it, most of you out there are already Posturite customers. So I hope that what I have to say won't sound too much like I'm trying to teach my grandmother to suck eggs. But there is a lot of this, possibly, that you will have heard before. The difference today is that I'm not trying to sell you anything, well, nothing other than an idea. What I want you to do, to spend more time doing, perhaps to encourage your workers to do, is to think more about the way in which you use your mouse, you work with your mouse. So let's have a look at uh, some of the points that you might consider when you're looking at the right mouse to choose. And just got some bullet points to, to kick us off with. What about the duration of use or the holding technique that you have, the way in which you hold the mouse. In fact, before we get into this, let's just try a quick poll if we can um, to see whether or not uh, your or the findings of the group who are listening to us are actually the same as I found in uh, the research. So we're going to give you a poll on screen which we'd like you to uh, respond to as best you can. And I think as Catherine perhaps mentioned to start with, um, we don't, uh, those people with tablets possibly won't be able to respond. So on the screen you should have the question, when using your computer, which of the following do you spend most time uh, working with? Is it your mouse, your keyboard, or indeed another device? So if you can perhaps try giving us your response to that and uh, 
We'll try and feed that back at the end of the, the presentation. It's difficult for a worker to control the length of time that they use the mouse. So this is usually a function of the work that we're doing, and we have little control, one might think. But the way in which we hold the mouse is important in terms of reducing that exposure to possible risk. Gripping the mouse for an extended period can and certainly does lead to muscle fatigue in the arm. There's some research back in 2006 by Chang and et al. And they examined the nature of our keyboard and mouse use. And at that time, they found their subjects spent three times as long using the mouse as they did using the computer during the day. Now, that was in 2006. And I fear the imbalance may have moved even further towards the mouse since then. For example, another survey. And we all know how, how reliable surveys can be. But another survey reported that 18% uh, of our online time is spent using social media these days. Now, that's nearly 11 minutes every hour. Unfortunately, the survey didn't say whether that was during work time or the respondent's own time. But it's something to a sobering thought and something I think we perhaps need to think about. Anyway, we perhaps shouldn't be surprised with the increasing access that we have to social media. Uh, there is, on this evidence, an important, and I would say critical issue with respect to health concerns uh, from using a mouse in the office. Now, this device, um, the Hoverstop mouse, is not something that I'm necessarily saying is a, a, the device we should be using. But it has some interesting uh, functions, which you may or may not be aware of. You can set it to a delay time from something like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whereby if you leave your hand on it, it will vibrate and remind you that you are just holding the mouse. Now, while you are using it to actively do things on the screen, to scroll, to select your websites, or to, to cut and paste, then the timer doesn't start running, so to speak. But once you're into perhaps one of these web pages where you're reading an article or you're reading one of your Word packages, your, your um, documents, then if you leave your, ma your hand on the mouse for more than the set 10 or 20 seconds, then it will start to, to vibrate to remind you that your hand is in that awkward position. I say awkward position because usually when my hand is over the mouse, there is some static loading on the arm in order to hold that position. Now, the designers of these um, devices had some research, or well, they commissioned some research by an eminent uh, group in, in, in uh, I think it was in Holland. And uh, a little perhaps difficult to quickly assimilate here, but after an hour's use, they found that for a set piece of work, if we look at the three bars on the left of that screen, they found that for just, what, 27 minutes of the time they were actively using the mouse, i.e. clicking or scrolling. For about 22 minutes, the, the middle bar, they were just holding the mouse, were not doing anything. And for about 12 minutes, the green bar, they were not using the mouse at all. When they were given the hover stop mouse to use, the middle bar, where, with the arrows, um, was shown to come down. The time spent just hovering with your hand on the mouse but not doing anything came down by about 20-25%. Now, I think this is ought to be uh, to wake us up to thinking about uh, these issues, because it is the static posture of the arm which will lead to fatigue and possibly to problems um, that you suffer in the long term. OK, another point, the accuracy of cursor movement that you require. Now, uh, it depends what type of work you're doing. But certainly, people working with um, graphics packages and so forth will need to have fine control of the cursor. And the type of mouse that you use will either hinder or assist the way in which you can do this. Most of the work we do, we can manage with perhaps the standard mouse. But for some people, something that's a little more sensitive something which can use the fine muscles of the fingers uh, more easily and more appropriately, as we would with a pen, 
um, is something that we should think about. I'm not, again, I'm not suggesting that this, uh, the pen mouse or the uh, I think it's called, um, it's necessarily the answer, but the point being to remember to use the right mouse for the right job. These are other mice which take up another point, which is, in fact, the contour mice you've probably come across, um, these two are left and right-handed mouse, but also they are different sizes. And certainly, the, to have the right sized mouse for your hand is an important issue in terms of determining whether and how effectively you can use that mouse and its cursor pointing um, abilities. Another point, the intensity of clicking. Does your job require you to continuously or regularly, frequently click the, the left, particularly the left um, click, click on the mouse? This is something that, that different jobs will, will perhaps require. Some people don't have to do it very often, but certainly I see a lot of people um, who have to go down a lot of menus, select what they want, have a look quickly at something, and then go back into that menu and select something else. It involves a lot of time spent clicking, and a lot of people, as a result of this, and it is a lot of people, seem to suffer from finger problems and uh, forearm problems as a result of this. So what can we do about this? Well, the sharp-eyed amongst you will probably have noticed this isn't a mouse, but uh, it is something that I think can reduce our exposure to the finger-clicking task. A lot of keyboards these days can be bought uh, with uh, special function buttons which tell us or allow us to use things like the cut, copy, and paste uh, facility. There are a lot of other buttons on this particular keyboard which allow you to do a lot of other things as well. The point being that the, the, the sort of anatomical, the muscular requirements to actually hit one of these buttons is far less, and you can do it with far less control than you would need if you were using the mouse to select those same functions from the, the menu. And therefore, it's, it reduces our exposure to the uh, fatiguing effect of mouse use. Other ways of doing this are using things like the roller mouse, which I'm sure many of you have come across. The point with this device is really, or the one that I want to, to talk about here, is that you can share the load. Instead of doing all the mouse clicking with your, with your right hand, as most people will be doing, you can share that load with your left as well, and therefore reduce, potentially, reduce the exposure of uh, the right arm by about 50%. In that way, hopefully, we don't start to create any problems for the left hand because the overall loading has been significantly reduced. The same sort of device um, is also available for use with laptops. Uh, so there are a, a lot of movement in this direction to help us overcome the problems which using the, the traditional mouse uh, presents us with. This is another way you, you might think of reducing the, the mouse clicking problem. Provide people with uh, provide people with dual screens. The reason for that is that a lot of people have to have a number of different packages open at the same time, or indeed they've got a number of documents open at the same time, and these are all perhaps minimised or have to be selected from the the, the menu bar at the bottom. If you've got two screens, you can share those uh, packages or screens between those two screens and therefore not have to click to bring them up and, uh, and work with them. And indeed, uh, it's perhaps a personal opinion, but I certainly find the ability as well to drag a, click and drag across screens to be a great benefit in, in terms of uh, working with most of the packages I use. So there's a lot of ways, I believe, that you can reduce the exposure to the mouse clicking risk. Another issue is using the scroll wheel. I don't know, uh, perhaps all of you will know that you can actually press down on the scroll wheel of your mouse and to bring up this icon. And if you do that, you then don't have to rotate the scroll wheel. Just by moving the mouse upwards across the, the screen or downwards, you will scroll the page in that direction. So you don't have to vigorously use your index finger to rotate the, the, um, the cursor, the scroll wheel. Simple things, but I find 
when I'm out uh, looking at people with problems, that they had never been introduced to that function of, of what is uh, available on nearly every mouse that we have. The position on the desk that we have the mouse, well, quite often it's placed uh, well in the most convenient position because we've had some documents on the uh, desk that have moved and we've moved the mouse away. And it causes a lot of arm tension in order to hold that in that the arm in that position. And what we want to do, obviously, is to reduce that mouse, the, the arm tension, so that you are in a, well, don't get fatigued so quickly. Now, obviously, the first thing would be not to have our arm out there when we don't need it to be. But equally well, uh, if we can bring that uh, mouse and mouse mat in closer to the uh, end of the keyboard, then that would also benefit us. But if you look, I apologize for the grainy picture, but if you look at the uh, image on the right, you can see that still the upper arm of that person is somewhat abducted. The arm, the upper arm is somewhat moved away from the body, and yet the mouse and the mouse mat are as close as you can get it to the keyboard. Well, something you can possibly do there is to think about whether or not your workers that you're dealing with actually need to use the numeric pad on the side of the keyboard. These keyboards are about 45 centimeters wide, and if you can get them to use or provide them with a mini keyboard, which is only about 30 centimeters wide, you're saving nearly six inches, 15 centimeters, on the right-hand side of the, the keyboard in which you could bring the, the mouse mat and the mouse closer to the side of the keyboard and closer to the side of your body. Now, I do stress that though the mini keyboard isn't necessarily the right device for those people that have to use the numeric pad frequently, although you can often get plug-in numeric pads. Um, but if, as is the case with the many people, um, they don't need to use a dedicated numeric pad, then this seems to me to be a very sensible option, uh, overcoming a lot of uh, issues that we see in offices these days. What about the particular hand posture we use on the mouse? Well, the issue that I want to particularly consider is, here is, is wrist extension. This, is, this picture is perhaps a little exaggerated, but it's the angle between the forearm and the dorsal surface of the hand. And for some people, that can be quite significant, particularly if you're seated a little high, or if you have a mouse which requires uh, a raised hand in order to grasp it. And a little while back, we did some research looking at people and as to the uh, amount of uh, wrist extension they had when they were using different mouse mice. And in this particular picture, the, the wrist extension isn't great. But we were looking to see what was the normal sort of wrist extension and what might be done to overcome the problem. And there are a number of ways that that can be done these days with different mice with supports. And one of the simplest um, would indeed be uh, the mouse beam. I personally find this to be very useful because not only does it raise the, the, the back end of my wrist, if you like, to the same level as the top of the mouse, but it also gives me a soft cushion to rest my wrist on instead of rubbing my, the bones of my wrist on the desk. But what it is doing is giving you a neutral uh, line through the hand, through the wrist, and up the forearm so that you reduce the muscle activity that is required in order to hold your wrist in that extended posture. Now, we might not think that just resting our, wrist, our hand on the mouse is causing as much muscle activity, but it, it, actually it is. And that muscle activity happens in the top of your forearm, where it, the muscles are attached to the bony part of the, the outside bony part of your elbow, the lateral epicondyle, if you like. Uh, and some people have been shown to suffer um, where they do have a lot of mouse use and they spend a lot of time with their wrist extended. They have been shown to suffer from tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis. So bringing the hand into the neutral position would be or could be quite beneficial. What's also, what's also happening in the arm when we use the traditional mouse, the standard mouse, is that the two long bones in the forearm, the radius and the ulna, they cross over. The radius crosses over the ulna bone. 
And in, in order to do that, there is also muscle activity. Not a great deal, but it's there. So in, hold, in order to hold your hand in the pronated position, palm down, you actually have to exert muscle activity in the forearm. And that again leads to fatigue. So you've probably come across uh, a number of these sorts of devices which are becoming more and more available now, which are the vertical mice. And the idea being that you have your, in order to use these mice, you hold your hand in what one might colloquially call the, the handshake position. And in doing that, you, re, you obviously take away that muscle activity that was required in order for you to place your hand palm down on the mouse. And this can be the solution to some of people's uh, problems at the, at, at the desk. Now, out of these four, and uh, they aren't the only four around, um, but these two that I've marked are also ambidextrous. So you can use either of these two with your left or your right hand just by clicking a switch and the, the functions then change to whichever hand uh, you've designated. Um, certainly, uh, that has obviously some added advantages. Um, but the point being, you try. I would suggest you try to find the mouse which serves your particular uh, worker's needs. Interestingly, just recently in the journal Ergonomics, um, Kelmo and Vieira have uh, done a some research, carry out some research on using vertical mouse, mice and looking at the difference in muscle activity and bi the biomechanics between that and the uh, traditional mouse. And they found that using the vertical mouse can decrease the exposure to biomechanical risk. Um, I think that's probably what I've been saying for a little while in, in this webinar and indeed um, before. But they've actually been able to prove it, which is always useful for us to uh, be able to put some numbers behind our, our intuitive beliefs, if you like. But what I'd like just to quickly, on almost uh, coming to the end now, is just to quickly say, well, if we think that having your hand in the vertical posture is good for you when you're using the mouse, what about when we're using the, the keyboard? Certainly, this type of split keyboard will assist in that, because when it's split in this way and raised up slightly, that will reduce the amount of hand pronation that you need to have to type at the keyboard. Just, a, just an idea, something to think about. Um, it's not something that I would recommend for any user, but people who have got forearm problems, maybe it's worth their while learning how to get used to one of these devices. And that's really one of the, the, the hurdles we're always having to overcome, whichever of these devices we're talking about, is overcoming that hurdle of people having to learn how to use a new device. But if they've got problems, it's certainly worth trying these. And finally, all of this may come to naught because actually what is coming in is tablets and hand gestures. And I think that the mouse that we understand and we use uh, these days may soon become something um, of a relic because the future is certainly in touchscreen technology. So I think on that point, um, I'll... Uh, hand back to, uh, to, to Catherine to see whether or not we got any uh, feedback on our poll and to say thank you again for listening and uh, um, I hope you'll join us again. Catherine. Okay, thank you very much, John. I thought that was a, well, certainly for me, it actually um, sort of brought everything together and um, reminded me of some things I'd forgotten about. So uh, thank you for that. Um, we haven't got any questions, so um, so happy days. It's very early weekends. Um, as far as the poll was concerned, it was it was very interesting to see that pretty much we, we were very similar um, to, to the research. So um, it's quite good to see that our listeners are, are like that too. And um, I'm sure everyone wants to get on with their lunch and get off early for the weekend so at that point I'd like to uh, thank you for attending and um, hope that you'll be able to join us for our next webinar on the 18th of October but we will be sending out um, invitations um, for that one moving forwards. So um, thank you very much and enjoy your weekend. <laughs>